Yeah. Market prices will sometimes end up at a level that's clearly to the advantage of some people, but to the disadvantage of others. Now, when this happens, the government may be asked to intervene in the markets, maybe by imposing a price ceiling if they feel a price is too high, and a price floor when a price is too low. A price ceiling is a legal upper limit on the price of a good or service. Once imposed, it becomes illegal for producers to charge a price higher than the ceiling price. A price floor, on the other hand, is an imposed minimum price that may be charged for a product. It becomes illegal to set a price lower than this limit. But what does that mean? And why does it happen? Why would they insist on a price higher or lower than the market price? We'll have to take a closer look. There are very compelling and compassionate arguments why there should be a minimum wage, for instance, in our economy. After all, who could think it fair for workers to be paid a starvation wage, a wage that's too low to live on? In 2008, the minimum wage in South Africa for farm and domestic workers was in the region of a thousand rand a month. Employers are allowed to pay wages higher than this minimum wage, but it is illegal to pay wages lower than this minimum wage. Economists can't say whether a minimum wage is right or wrong, because that goes beyond just economic considerations and involves political, social and humanitarian issues. What economists can do, however, is work out the likely effect of a minimum wage, which is a price floor, set at a higher level than the market price. Using some of the demand and supply tools we've now been equipped with, we can evaluate the effect of this price intervention in the market. On the one side of the market, we have demand for labour, demand generated by firms, business and industry. The demand curve for labour is downward sloping, indicating that as the price rises, or in this case the wage rises, the quantity of labour demanded falls and vice versa. We'll denote the quantity of labour by the letter M. Now, looking at the supply curve for labour, it's upward sloping, indicating that the higher the wage, obviously the more willing people are to work, and so the higher the quantity of labour supplied. Without any government interference in the labour market, the equilibrium wage, that's the wage where the quantity of labour demanded is equal to the quantity of labour supplied, is established at price, or wage, W-E, and at the quantity of labour supplied, N-E. Now, this equilibrium wage may not necessarily be regarded as a fair or living wage. Due to the population explosion of the last hundred years, there's an excess supply of labour. There are millions of people all over the world who live in poverty and often have to work for very low wages, below what's regarded as a living wage. It is in exactly this type of scenario that government might feel that it's its responsibility to intervene in the market, to prevent employers from exploiting labour and to protect the income of households, ensuring that they come close to a living wage. Government, through its regulatory powers and the legal system, will enforce a minimum wage, say WM. Now, WM is likely to be higher than the equilibrium wage established by the market itself. That's why the government intervened in the first place. The market is now having to absorb forces beyond our usual demand and supply. And we can see that at a higher wage of WM, Employers cut back on their employment of labour, since it's now more expensive to hire labour. But, on the supply side of the market, the higher wages attract more people to that type of work, and there's an increase in the quantity of labour supplied. This drop in the quantity of labour required by firms, combined with the increase in the number of job seekers motivated by this higher minimum wage, will now lead to an excess supply of labour. In other words, there are suddenly not enough jobs for all the people seeking work. This government intervention, the imposition of the minimum wage, has created more unemployment in the labour market. 
What the government has achieved with its minimum wage intervention is that those people who can get jobs are now definitely better off in terms of income. But there's a negative effect too, because other people are worse off, because they now have no job and no income. Studies have shown that the negative impacts of minimum wage intervention usually falls most heavily on the least skilled groups, teenagers, women. An intervention to help the poor can actually end up hurting the very poorest.